you play two seasons with a team, you win two Super Bowls, and then you get cut. Honestly, that's not a bad way to go out with a 100% success rate. Welcome, everybody, to JG9 News, where we talk all things NFL all the time. I'm Jared Garen, I representing the 904 from the 602. And today, we are talking about the two-time defending Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs, this team behind me right here, and wide receiver Marquez Valdez scaling because after two seasons with Kansas City, he is no longer there. The Chiefs officially releasing him and saving $12 million in cap space, cap space that the Chiefs desperately need. And why do they need this cap space? Well, that's because their cap space went from $28 million to just $17 million, even though they haven't added any way. You might be wondering why is that the case? Well, that is because of this little thing right here, the proven performance escalator. It was introduced in the new CBA that was out in 2020. And what this says is that players are rookie contracts from rounds two through seven that achieve certain criteria. So playing X amount of snaps, making the Pro Bowl, etc., they get mandatory pay raises. 33rd team has a breakdown of it. You can see it right here. A level one PPE is awarded to a second round pick who participates in 60% of his team's snaps, 35% of its rounds three through seven. Level two PPE, if you participate in 55% of your team's snaps in each of your first three seasons, and the big one, the biggest escalator, level three, non-negotiable. If you make the Pro Bowl and any of your first three seasons on the original ballot for your fourth season, your pay goes up. Now, the Chiefs have drafted so well as of late that they have the most players of any team on the proven performance escalator with four. Tied with the Washington Commanders for that. And you can see all the players eligible for pay raises, non-negotiable pay raises in 2024. And you see Nick Bolden and Noah Gray got level one raises. Trey Smith got level two. And Creed Humphrey, their center, got a level three raise. So because of that, the Chiefs lost $11 million in cap space. They actually got punished for drafting too well. So they get some of that cap space back. Actually, they get a lot of it back by cutting MBS, saving $12 million that way. And the move makes a ton of sense. This isn't really a surprise to a lot of people. Number one, besides the cap space issue, the Chiefs have a lot of free agents defensively that they want to sign and bring back. The Chiefs defense under Steve Spagnuolo has been nothing short of magnificent. And that's because of guys like Drew Tranquil, Legereus Sneed, and Chris Jones, they want to bring those guys back, and we'll see if they can do that, but freeing up money definitely helps in that regard. On top of that, you can probably get a receiver of slightly better quality at a less price than the $12 million that you're paying to MBS in free agency, even though it is a weak wide receiver year. The market's not great. There's no real bona fide number one wide out this year in free agency outside of Mike Evans, maybe Calvin Ridley, maybe you can make that argument if the Jags even let him hit free agency. But really, outside of Mike Evans, there is no one that is a bona fide number one. It's a weak market for wide receivers. But still, you could probably get someone better than $12 million, especially for a guy like MBS, who had issues with his hands. We saw that in the Philly game on Monday Night Football. Dropped that big pass at the end that cost the Chiefs the game in that Super Bowl rematch. This past season for MBS, 21 catches, 315 yards, one touchdown. In his two seasons at Kansas City, 63 catches, 1,002 yards, and three touchdowns. Now, obviously, he had some big catches in the playoffs, caught a touchdown in the Super Bowl, had that big catch at the end of the AFC Championship against the Baltimore Ravens to send them to Las Vegas for Super Bowl 58. But over his two years there, an average of 31 catches, 500 yards, and one and a half touchdowns. That is definitely not enough to warrant that kind of contract and that kind of cap hit. $12 million is a lot, especially for a guy that played 16 games last year in the regular season. Didn't play Week 18, so the final game of the season against the Chargers because the Chiefs had their seating locked up, so they just played the backups. But of those 16 games, only had one game where he had more than two catches. He only had one game where he had more than 50 receiving yards. He had just two games, one-eighth of the games, where he had more than 40 receiving yards. This was despite playing 55% of the snaps on offense, the second most of any wide receiver on the team that year, the only one better being the second-round pick. The revelation about the only good receiver on that team right now, Rasheed Rice. On top of that, MVS is about to be 30 years old in 2024. Now, that's not a death sentence by any means. You can be on the wrong side of 30 and be totally fine at wide receiver. Usually, they don't decline until about 32, 33 years old. Having said that, though, he is on the wrong side of 30, and his numbers were already not great. 
So he's about to leave the prime of his career. And if the numbers are like that as they are, probably not a good indication of things to come. So MBS, you save $12 million. You let him go. It does open up a need at wide receiver, but in fairness, the Chiefs needed a wide receiver as it was. And you look at the free agency market, as I said before, you can get guys that are better than MBS for less than $12 million. Look at Cincinnati Bengals wide receiver Tyler Boyd. They brought back T. Higgins. They got to pay Jamar Chase eventually. Tyler Boyd is projected to be a free agent and not come back to Cincinnati. And according to the experts, he's projected to make $9 million a year. Aaron Shadz on ESPN has the same line of thinking that I do, that if the Chiefs want to address this with a veteran wide receiver in free agency, maybe they could go after Tyler Boyd and it's costing you less than MVS. You get that veteran wide out and you're not paying as much. Tyler Boyd is the same age as MBS. He's actually a month younger. Not that it really matters, but still, he has way better production than MBS does. In 2023, Tyler Boyd had 67 catches, 667 yards, and two touchdowns. Compare that to MBS, 21 catches, 315 yards, one touchdown. So double the yards, double the touchdowns, triple the catches, and reduce the salary because Boyd is projected to make about $9 million a year. MBS was making $12 million on the cap space. MBS has no seasons in his career with 700-plus yards. Tyler Boyd has done it five times in the last six years. Now, does this fix the need at wide receiver for the Chiefs? Not entirely. You would still need to draft a wide receiver because you don't really have too many on the team. Harmon's a free agent, although he's probably coming back on a shorter deal, but I'm not sure you can really rely on him a whole lot besides that Super Bowl catch. On top of that, Sky Moore has been a massive disappointment of a second-round pick. I think a lot of people had very high expectations for him as a potential slot receiver, but he has not done well. Every other receiver not doing so well on the Chiefs. You still need to draft someone. You still need a bona fide number one guy to pair alongside Rice and Boyd, but it is better and more fiscally responsible to have a guy like Tyler Boyd at $9 million than MVS at $12 million, especially because even if you sign Tyler Boyd, that's $3 million extra you have versus the MVS contract to maybe sign a running back in free agency like Austin Eckler, or you tie it into the Snee deal, the Jones deal, the Tranquil deal. Regardless, MBS no longer on the team to the shock of no one. We'll see where he winds up next. I'm not sure where he could potentially wind up. Maybe the Carolina Panthers, they do need a lot of help at wide receiver, and one draft class is not fixing that. They really have no one on that team at wide out outside of Adam Thielen, and he is getting worse and worse by the year. He is getting up there in ages in his mid-30s. He was about the only good receiver on that team. You want to be able to up with as many weapons as possible. Again, not saying that MBS would fix anything there, but he would definitely improve the depth chart and improve one of the worst receiving units in football. Maybe the New England Patriots also, they have a boatload of cap space, over $77 million in cap space, and they don't really have a ton of receivers on their team that are any quality. So you could see MBS wanting up there, even though... The issue with MBS, obviously, is I play for the Packers when they were winning, the Chiefs when they were winning. So if you're going to go to a team like the Panthers or the Patriots, probably going to cost a lot more money because it would be a losing team. I'm not sure MBS necessarily wants to do that. Having said that, though, MBS no longer a Chief, and the Chiefs saved $12 million as a result. But what are your thoughts on this move? Where do you think Mark Roosevelt is scaling winds up next? Do you think the Chiefs made the right move? Do you think the Chiefs need to upgrade at wide receiver? And if so... How do you think they're going to do it? Do you think they do it via free agency? Do you think they do it with the draft? Combination of both? Let me know in the comments down below. And that's going to do it for this episode of JG9 News. Be sure you like and subscribe. It helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out my main channel, Jaguar Gear 9, where we talk all things NFL history all the time. Until next time, this is Jaguar Gear 9 signing off. And as always, go Jags.